What's up, human physics class? Uh, this is the first video, section 11.1 on the respiratory system. As you can see here, we're going to be dealing with the lungs and how uh, air moves in and out of them and what we do inside of the lungs in terms of breathing and how those structures inside have a specific function and also what the mechanism is of breathing, the inhal inhalation versus exhalation. And then what do we do to control our breathing? Those are going to be kind of our four processes that we move through. So let's get started. All right, as you can see here, we have some vocabulary words. So as always, I'm going to have you take an opportunity to either write it into your notes, um, put it into note cards, or some sort of app. Uh, we have a very small amount. As you can see, I think we have 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 words today. Very simple. Um, so take a second to jot those down. All right, so what is our major function of this respiratory system? And we have five. Uh, first and foremost, it's going to be to obtain oxygen out of the air and remove carbon dioxide. Now, a lot of people think that oxygen is, is a basically purely air. But actually, when you take in a breath of air, only about 20% of that air that you breathe is made of oxygen. 78% is nitrogen. We have 2%, which is probably a little leftover carbon dioxide and other things. So majority of the air you breathe in is actually nitrogen-based. So if someone gave you an oxygen tank and it was 100% oxygen and you need to breathe that in, you would actually die. You would overload the pH of your blood, which we'll talk about. That's one of the functions. And essentially, your, your respiratory system would shut down your circulatory system, which would not give blood to the brain. You'd kick the bucket. So... Um, not only do we obtain oxygen and remove carbon dioxide, but we filter the air. Uh, we'll discuss in a little bit more detail, not too much, the, the nasal cavity and what's inside of that and how that will filter the air out. It is actually better to breathe through your nose than it is through your mouth. Um, and fortunately, a lot of us, including myself included, are what we call mouth breathers. So we drool a lot, we snore a lot, um, and we actually don't filter our air as well. Uh, another function of the respiratory system that you probably didn't think about is the fact that we can produce sound. Okay, right here we have the larynx, which is considered our voice box, and that is going to essentially have air running over cords, and those cords, depending upon the um, pitch, loudness, things like that, we can adjust the amount of air running through it to produce sound. Um, the respiratory system also helps us with our function of our sense of smell. So when you breathe in through your nose, that air has chemicals in it. And we have chemical receptors in the nose that attach right to the brain and help us perceive smell. Now a major one that we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about later is how the this, this system regulates blood pH. And the only thing I'm going to give you is to, right now in terms of what pH means is Usually we like our blood to be around 7, which is neutral, but we're going to talk about how oxygen and carbon dioxide and the amount of those molecules will affect that blood pH. All right, so with each breath, breath of air, CO2 and oxygen is exchanged. Inside of the nose, if we were to zoom in here, we have hair and we have mucus. Okay, which would be considered our snot. And what that does is it'll grab onto any dirt particles, any foreign objects, and actually filter them out. Okay, so if you've ever been, you know, working on some sort of outdoor project that is, puts a lot of dust into the air, you'll actually notice that if you blow your nose, you'll see a lot of those fine dust particles in your snot. So that means your nose is doing its job. Um, when you exhale that air will push over that, that larynx and, and produce sound and produce our voice, along with a little help from the tongue. And something called a chemoreceptor will be found deep in the nasal cavity. And every time you take in a breath of air, there's going to be chemicals in the air. Um, and those chemicals are going to latch onto those chemoreceptors and send a signal to the brain. That's going to give us that sense of smell. And then finally, um, this is what I talked about on the previous slide, but your normal pH, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner here, your blood pH, should be between 7.35 and 7.45. Um, 7, right on, is actually considered neutral. But in this case, we like to have our blood kind of toward the basic side. But notice how close it is. If you are actually at 7, your blood is considered acidic. And if you are past about 7.5, it's considered alkalinic or basic. Oxygen... When you breathe in oxygen, it acts like a base. It is not a base. I want to be very clear with that, but it acts like a base and will help move the blood pH this direction. 
Um, if you have a high level of CO2, it's going to act like an acid. So if you are you know, breathing into a bag, and we'll talk about that hyperventilating, you are actually causing acidosis, which should be high levels of CO2 in the blood. So with each breath of air, we are trying to normalize that blood pH level. Okay. Now, what can that do? Well, if, you're, if your blood gets too acidic or too basic, it will start killing cells, and that's what you don't want. All right, so this slide quickly speaks to how we sense smell, and I just want to verbally go through it. Feel free to jot some things down, but essentially, if you took air in through your nose here in this bottom left picture, the air would move up, and then it would move right past these chemoreceptors, which in picture B here you can see um, are right here. So imagine these little green dots as airborne odors. Okay, um, We have olfactory epithelium, and we have nerves. Okay, And here's that olfactory bulb. So as those chemoreceptors right here latch onto these airborne odors, it's going to send signals directly up to the brain. And then our brain is therefore going to perceive and interpret those signals. All right, since this is a respiratory system, I want to briefly talk through the processes, kind of in a general sense, of how we respirate. And respiration is considered the process of gas exchange between the atmosphere and body cells. So think about that. The atmosphere, the air we breathe, and the cells in our body. We have four steps which we're going to go to in more detail. But number one is considered ventilation, and that is the movement of air into the lungs. So if you ever heard of something called a ventilator, that is speaking to a machine that is going to push air into your lungs. From there, we have a process of gas exchange between our blood and our circulatory system and air. And we call that external respiration. All right? And once we have what we need in our blood, those gases are going to tr be transported in the blood to all of our cells and tissues. And when they return back to the lungs, we're going to have a gas exchange between the blood and the body cells. Okay, or excuse me, when the blood gets to those tissues in, in step three, we're going to have a gas exchange in, in step four between the blood and those body cells. And we call that internal respiration. So essentially the process goes, we ventilate air in, we exchange it in the lungs in the process of external respiration. We transport in the blood. And then internal respiration is where we exchange the gas between the blood and the body cells. So this process from one, two, three, and four is all going to deal with just oxygen. We're going to breathe in that oxygen. We're going to exchange it between our blood. And we're going to exchange it between our cells. All right, last thing I want to discuss is a process that you've probably learned in biology. And it's a very long process, but thankfully we're just going to go into it in a very small detail. And that is something called cellular respiration, the process of oxygen use and CO2 production at the cellular level. So this image does a great job of explaining what's, happen what's happening. As you take in a breath of air, oxygen is brought into the lungs. And as you exhale, that CO2 is a byproduct. It is actually given off. We don't use it. But what's happening at a cellular level? Well, if you see here, we're going to take glucose, which is six twelve or C six H twelve O six, plus some oxygen, which we just breathed in, and we are going to derive energy. All right, that is our goal. ATP stores energy, so our goal in each one of our cells is to create energy through this process, cellular respiration, and then use it for all of our processes. Okay. As a byproduct, we're going to make some water, and we're going to make some CO2. That water is kept in our body, and as actually inside of an animal cell here, is given off as water vapor. And that CO2, as you know, is going to be sent back to the lungs and then breathed out. So, what does a cell do? Well, a cell is responsible inside to use this process. And inside something called mitochondria, we make that energy. We go through this process of cell respiration. So when you take in a breath of air that oxygen is going to run into your blood into a cell. And once that oxygen is diffused into a cell, mitochondria are going to pick it up. And they're going to go through a process. Okay, They're going to break glucose down into pyruvate, pyruvate um, down into smaller particles for today's sake. And essentially, we're going to use something called the electron transport chain. That's where we de derive a majority of this ATP. ATP is essential for every process in the body. So you can understand how important cell respiration and the whole process of breathing is. That's all for section one. Please make sure you study your vocab words and, and you'll eventually see how they apply to some of the major topics we discuss. Um, next up, we'll look at the major structures of the respiratory system in section two. 
All right, Yago out.